Here I am in the front elevation and we are going to continue creating dimensions and parameterizing them. We have a few already created. Let's go ahead and parameterize those. First one we'll select. We'll head over and create. We'll call it knee height. Second one we'll create and call it mid height. And for the sake of ease, we won't worry about the third one. We do need to create some dimensions for the base of the column and the top of the column, as well as the angle parameter dimensions for the top portion. So again, using the keyboard shortcut DI and saving our project, we'll create the dimensions for the base of the column and the top of the column. You'll also notice that as you place the dimensions, they'll want to line up, and it's a good rule of thumb to place them in this respect. It just makes your life a lot easier down the road. We'll select the bottom one and parameterize this as well. And the top one. Now since these have to be parameterized as well, and we've already created them, all we need to do is select the particular dimension that we need. We also notice that the objects reference planes will physically move to agree with those conditions. <clears throat> so now we need to create a couple more angle parameters. So I'll go to the annotate tab, angle dimension command and place the first one and then we'll place the second one. Let's parameterize this as well and we'll call it beam angle. Now since this one is created we should be able to select it and change it. You may get this occurring. It'll tell you an error that says constraints are not satisfied. What's happening, I'm going to cancel this, is that as we parameterize this dimension, it's forcing this reference plane to adjust and it doesn't know which end is supposed to stay put. And so it's trying to flatten out the angled reference plane. So in that case, the easy fix is to delete the one that we've created select the parameterized dimension and use the mirror command. Now to test that this is functioning properly we need to flex it. So we head over to the family types window here in the ribbon. It'll bring up the family types window and here is a list of all the parameters that we created. We can go ahead and make value changes and it should flex the dimension and the reference planes. Now, good rule of thumb as well when you're doing this is just make one adjustment first. Hit OK. And does it adjust properly? Yes. That's a good sign. The reason we want to do this one at a time is that if you were to go in here and change everything at one time, <clears throat> click OK, and it breaks on you, it'll say constraints are not satisfied, you then have to kind of hunt and peck to find out which parameter that you created is breaking. So it's a good rule of thumb to try to do this individually one at a time. So let's set this to one and say this one to say two. Do those adjust? Good. And let's continue with the rest. We'll say knee height of, I don't know, say nine feet. We'll set this one to say 26 feet and set the mid to 11 feet, six inches. Do they all adjust accordingly? It looks like they do. Let's head over to the floor plan view and look at these dimensions again and flex this as well. 
So we have column width of two feet. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and change this to one foot six and then change the beam width to say nine inches. Do they flex accordingly in plan view as well? Good. So from this point, what we have been able to accomplish is creating the dimensions and parameterizing them such that when we flex the skeleton system by changing those values, it adjusts properly.